In 1993, Depeche Mode would release their album Songs of Faith and Devotion. The record was released against the backdrop of alternative rock, which was popular at the time, and of course had some influence on the sound of the record. The recording of the album and the tour to support the record tested the band's career, nearly resulting in frontman David Gahan dying during one of the band's live shows, and today we're going to take a look at what happened. The writing sessions for Depeche Mode's Songs of Faith and Devotion were full of tensions. The band's previous record, 1990's Violator, was a huge commercial success, giving the band their first platinum record in America. 1993 Songs of Faith and Devotion would debut at the number one spot on the Billboard charts in America, and prior to recording the album, the band members had not lived together during the recording of their past records. And that changed with Songs of Faith and Devotion, where the members lived together in Madrid, Hamburg, and London, the three cities where the album was recorded in. The band's personal problems and living in close quarters exacerbated internal tensions. Frontman David Gahan was dealing with heroin addiction, while principal songwriter, guitarist, and keyboard Martin Gore was feeling the pressure of following the success of the band's previous record. Meanwhile, keyboardist Andy Fletcher was dealing with depression. The band's initial sessions had to be scrapped, and producer Flood described the recording of the album as, and I quote, pulling teeth. Fletcher, meanwhile, would recall about the album, we were in the worst possible state as members, but we were creating some of our best work. At the time, it was a living hell. I remember thinking I'm never going to make another record under these circumstances again because it's so much not fun. It was during the recording sessions the band members bickered over pushing their own song ideas to make the record, but despite the internal tensions, the album would be done and would be a huge hit. Released on March 22nd of 1993 to both critical and commercial acclaim, it led the band to launch their biggest and most ambitious tour to date. Despite the success of the record though, and the problems that aided the band during the time in the studio also joined them on the road. Fletcher would be replaced mid-tour due to him not liking being on the road, while Alan Wilder would leave the group in 1995, citing his unhappiness with the state of the band. Gore would look back at the tour saying, I don't think anyone was ever the same after that tour, with Q Magazine later referring to the devotional tour as, and I quote, the most debauched rock tour ever. It was during a stop in Montreal, Canada as part of the tour, frontman David Gahan, reportedly suffering from a cold according to the band's label, was having trouble singing. Bandmate Martin Gore would take over and sing a few numbers, and Gahan would return to do a few more songs before the band ended the show early. But perhaps the darkest date on the tour would happen on October 8, 1993, during a stopover in New Orleans. Gahan would collapse on stage after suffering a drug-induced heart attack. When the paramedics arrived on stage and Gahan was taken off on a stretcher, the band would play the song Death's Door. Gahan would look back telling Uncut Magazine, Death was the furthest thing from my mind, to be honest. I was in so much denial about what was really going on. The group would limp along until July of 1994. It was during their final show of the tour that Gahan jumped into the crowd only to crack several ribs and suffer from internal bleeding after falling 12 feet onto a row of seats. In 1997, Depeche Mode would release their follow-up album, Ultra, and in an interview with MTV, the band revealed that they would not tour to support the record. The band would, however, play one mini-performance at a party for radio contest winners in LA. MTV would report at the time, and I quote, David Gahan still wobbling back from drug addiction. The band says it's decided not to subject him to the backstage temptations of a full-scale tour. Perhaps the lack of touring impacted Ultra's album sales, with MTV reporting at the time that the album debuted at number 5 on the Billboard charts and quickly dropped off thereafter. Andrew Fletcher would tell the network a different take on the situation, saying, at least this way around, hopefully we will release more records. I think in the end, that's what the fans want, and I'm sure in the future we'll tour as well. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Once again, rock and roll with your stories. Take care.